Now at 11, a deadly crime spree. It's very shocking to see. Four people are stabbed. She was really bandaged and there was a lot of blood. In a normally quiet Beaverton neighborhood. And just in, we now know who police say was behind it all. We could see as much rain over the next four days as we usually see for the entire month of December. But first, a historic day in Washington, D.C. A great day for the Constitution of the United States. President Trump becomes only the third president in history to be impeached. It really is. It's a disgrace. We're taking a closer look at what's next. And we are going to start tonight by taking a look at the final vote tally. This is after a full day of debate. The House passed both articles of impeachment against President Trump, mostly on party lines. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Dan Haggerty. Now, this means for the first time ever, a president will be facing a Senate impeachment trial while also running for reelection. The Democrats insist the vote was their constitutional duty and that they're safeguarding democracy for the future. A great day for the Constitution of the United States. A sad one for America. It gives us no pleasure, no pleasure to stand here today. But President Trump's conduct has put our next election at risk. At that same exact time that the House was voting in Washington, we saw this, the president rallying supporters in Michigan. He turned the tables on those who voted against him. With today's illegal, unconstitutional and partisan impeachment the do nothing democrats and they are do nothing all they want to do is focus on this what they could be doing are declaring their deep hatred and disdain for the american voter this lawless partisan impeachment is a political suicide march for the democrat party it is the Senate now that gets to decide if President Trump will be forced out of office. The trial there is expected to begin next month. It is unlikely, though, that the Senate will convict the president, considering that Republicans have the majority there and they would need a two-thirds vote to remove him from office. Our Verify team is looking at how this Senate trial works exactly, how it's different from what we've seen so far with the House inquiry. That closer look is coming up for you in about 10 minutes. Situations of this magnitude are alarming and unsettling especially in a tight-knit community like Beaverton. Are you hearing from Beaverton's mayor? They are expressing grief after learning of a deadly crime spree in a normally quiet neighborhood. Tonight, we can tell you that one person has died. Three others are hurt. Investigators have their suspect in custody, but at this point, we don't know why he turned violent. But we're asking those questions. This started with two stabbings in Beaverton. You can see on the map here, it ended near 217 and Highway 99 in Tigard. Catherine Cook takes a look at the chain of events. Beaverton police say this man is accused of stabbing four people, killing one of them Wednesday during a Washington County crime spree. Police arrested 20-year-old Salvador Martinez Romero for murder, attempted murder, and robbery. Around 11 a.m., police responded to a bank robbery at the Wells Fargo in the Murray Hill Shopping Center. Two women, a customer and an employee, had both been stabbed. And I came outside and there was an employee of the bank bawling her eyes out. She couldn't even talk. Dylan Prickett works at the coffee shop next door. He watched as first responders tried to help. And that's when they wheeled somebody that looked like they had uh, like a stab wound to her neck. She was really bandaged and just there was a lot of blood. One of the victims, the bank customer, died from her injuries. Next, police say Martinez Romero went to the Planet Fitness in the same shopping center. There, witnesses say he stabbed a man leaving the gym, stole his car, then drove to Tigard. At some point, he ditched that car, possibly in this Tigard neighborhood on Southwest Leiden Drive. As I turned, I noticed there is a uh, yellow tape. Hani Karam says police spent all afternoon collecting evidence from the car parked next to his house. When I asked the policeman that was behind me, uh, is everything okay? Is there anything going on? He goes, no, it's okay. By then, Martinez Romero was under arrest, but not before one more stabbing and car theft. Police say his fourth victim was a woman he attacked near Southwest Murray Boulevard and Shoals Ferry Road. He stole her car, then ditched it near this Chevron in Tigard near Highway 99. Guy pulled up, jumped out of the vehicle, and took off going around the uh, gas station here, 
picked up my cigarettes <laughs> and dropped some money along the way. And then next thing I know, there's like 20 cops going up and down the road. Finally, police cornered Martinez Romero and arrested him in a driveway in a nearby neighborhood. They called for uh, an ambulance because he was bleeding. The end of a deadly crime spree. This stuff has to stop. That shook an entire community. When you hear about it, you have goosebumps everywhere and you have no idea what to do. It depressed me all day. The surviving victim from the bank stabbing is in critical condition tonight. The two other stabbing victims are being treated for serious injuries. Martinez Romero is lodged in the Washington County Jail. He's expected in court this week. A very strange and tragic day there. Thank you, Catherine. Now let's get you caught up on some of tonight's other headlines. A police chase in Eastern Oregon today led to the arrest of a Portland murder suspect. Charvel Douglas is accused of killing Jaquana Goggins. You might remember this case. Her body was found in her car in a Southeast Portland parking lot back in February. This is a new escape technique. Uh, this guy tried to get away from Portland police today by paddling a kayak with his bare hands. 24 year old is Jante Patton trying to get away from police in his car first, but then he ditched that and he jumped into the kayak on the Columbia River. Firefighters and sheriff's deputies helped get him into custody before the frigid water got the best of him. He is now in jail facing several charges, including burglary and domestic violence. In Salem today, police started to enforce a new ban on homeless camping. The law went into effect on Monday. They did give people a few days to get notice and get their things out of there. When the cleanup began this morning, some people still weren't prepared. Many of them said, frankly, they have nowhere else to go. The city council approved funding for 140 new shelter beds, but those beds won't be available until the new year. Check this out, snow coming down in the gorge. This is a video from Mark. Thank you so much. Shooting this video from Hood River tonight with those large snowflakes falling down. And Rachel posted this photo here of what she called fat, wet snowflakes. That's a pretty good description. Joe Ranieri in for Matt tonight. And Joe, this is just the start of a, some especially wet weather we're going to have here for a stretch. Exactly right, Dan. If you're be traveling throughout the Columbia River Gorge at all tonight or tomorrow morning, you'll be seeing some slick roads out there along with some of that snow. I know it looks really pretty. Well, we're also be seeing some areas of freezing rain. You can kind of see on the radar are what's happening along the coast, basically the west side of the state. We're just seeing some heavy showers at times, and I tell you what, these showers are really going to grow in intensity over the next 12 to 24 hours. You travel along I-84, basically east of Cascade Locks, Hood River, start to see just some warm enough air over there just to see showers, but just west and east of it near the gorge, you will be seeing some freezing rain. Travel south along Highway 35 into Timberline, Mount Hood Government Camp. Nothing but snow showers. Get this, anywhere from 6 to 12 inches of new snow overnight. Now, the higher amounts, so almost a foot of snow, will be throughout the uh, higher elevations. But because of all of our active weather, we have some quite a bit of watches and warnings. A, a flood watch will be in effect tomorrow night and into a good part of the weekend throughout the west side of the Cascades. Winter storm warning in effect throughout the Oregon uh, Cascades. And that ice storm warning is in effect throughout the Columbia River Gorge until 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So make sure you take it slow. If you're traveling along I-84 or throughout the mountain passes, not just tomorrow, but over the next couple of days, I'll break it all down for you and let you know just how much rain is in the forecast over the next few days in just a few minutes. All right, big rain coming. Some people seeing snow. We'll see you again in a bit, Matt. Thank you. Joe, not Matt. Matt's off tonight. I had so much hope that she was going to come back. So it's sad. A very sad day. Her friends trying to come to terms with the murder of a Vancouver teenager. Her suspected killer made his first appearance in front of a judge today. Vancouver police say David Bogdanoff strangled 17 year old Nikki Kuhnhausen after she told him that she was transgender. Police believe that that followed some sort of sexual contact. Kuhnhausen was last seen June 6th and according to court documents, she was picked up by Bogdanov at a friend's house after messaging him on Snapchat. It wasn't until earlier this month that a hiker found her remains in the Larch Mountain area of Clark County. And according to court documents, again, Bogdanov's cell phone did ping in that area around the time of her disappearance. There is a big change coming to the way electricity is made in the West. The biggest utilities plan to shut down 12 coal fired plants over the next eight years. And there is a significant question about whether there will be a gap between supply and demand once that happens. Here's what one expert told our Pat Doris. Headed towards zero uh, over the course of certainly the next five to 10 years. And when that goes to zero, will there be enough power to replace it? Well, I think that's what this conference is about, is that our forecasts say that we're going to have significant problems. 
All right, so uh, that was the focus. All of this, a focus of a half hour special that we aired a little earlier tonight here on KGW. This is a huge issue. It's facing all of us. I think you need to know what's going on. If you miss this special, it's called Power Struggle. You can watch it right now on our KGW YouTube channel. All right, check this out. It was wonderful. I love seeing this. It's a parade at KGW today. This is the day when our great toy drive partners deliver thousands of donations, all of the things that you help provide to local families. We want to thank all of you. All of you helped out and donated, including our, par our partners, Regents, Toyota, and IQ Credit Union. We collected at least 35,000 toys for kids in need this holiday season. When we come back, as the impeachment process moves to the Senate now, it's going to look a lot different. We're going to break down the rules and the lack of rules that will affect the trial. And I'm sure you've come across garbage at your house, some stuff that you're not really sure. Should this be recycled? Should this not? We're going to show you how you can get a personalized answer before you pick the wrong bin. And later, a local choir getting a celebrity spruce thanks to a generous donor.